Hello everyone. I hope you are fit and fine. Today in this video session, we are going to deal with a beautiful poem, The Worm. The Worm is a poem written by Thomas Gisborne. In this poem, Thomas Gisborne would like to give us a very important message which is applicable to each and every human being. So without wasting the time, let's start the poem with warming up activities. So in the warming up activities, we have total four questions. The first question as per the new radio syllabus is deducted and there is no need to discuss the first question. But still, I would like to tell you something about it. We all know it very well that every creature on this earth plays their own role. And worms or the central concern of this poem, that is worm, they were playing a very important role in maintaining ecological balance. And of course, now we are going to discuss about the second, third and fourth question. So what is the second question here? Let's see. Think and write down how the following creatures can be useful. So here you have to think about the creatures which are given here. Total 5 creatures we have. And you need to think about that how exactly they were useful in the nature. So let's see. The first one is dragonfly. Dragonfly controls unwanted insects. So that is the main work of dragonfly. The second creature here we have spider you all had seen the spider in your home right so spider keeps insect population under control so of course spider is eating them and the spider is playing an important role an important role to control the population of unwanted insects the third one is ants you all know it very well about the ants that they turn arid soil. Arid means it's very important to mix up the air into the soil. And of course, here ants are playing their role that to make it possible for air to become mixed with soil or water. That is very important and they are doing this particular task. So ants playing their own role to fertile the land. Honeybees are there. Our next creature is honeybees. So honeybees basically they provides us honey and they help in pollination. Pollination that is the scientific term maybe you learnt in the science. You will get the more information from your science teacher if you are asking to her or him. So, I am not going to tell you much about the pollination, right? So, here the last creature we are going to discuss that is earthworms. So, earthworms, they basically loosen the soil and they turn organic garbage into fertilizers. So, that is their main work. It means such kind of the fertilizers are very useful to the land. And of course, due to this particular fertilizer, it is possible to take out the crops. So this is all about the five creatures and their use. In the third question, let's see, little creatures in nature can also be your teachers. Think and write what we can learn from the following. So every creature, every element in the nature definitely taught us something and they became our teacher. So we have total four creatures here. The first one already we have discussed about the bees, right? Bees, bees taught us how to organize and they taught us how to do the hard work and how to do the work in discipline. So these three main things they taught us. Ants, we all know it very well that ants are, are the good team workers. They are doing their work in teamwork, right? And of course, they were hard workers as well. So, they taught us teamwork and hard work. Spiders. Spiders basically taught us patience. How to be patient in our life. Whenever we have the difficult condition, we need to be patient. We need to be calm. 
and here spiders taught us how to become patient right the next one is perseverance perseverance means in hindi jisko jit kehte hain yani how exactly you are firm on your decision so sp spiders are basically taught us this perseverance spider jo hote hain wo hamesha apna kaam dhudhata se karte hain wo kabhi bhi piche hatte nahi so that is the main work of spiders and the last one is caterpillars we all know it very well that caterpillars need they suffered a lot because they changed into a butterfly and they taught us patience and they taught us how to accept the change so acceptance of change that is the quality we learn from the caterpillars so this is all about the third question the fourth one that is breeding worms to use them to convert organic waste into fertilizer is called vermiculture or vermicomposting right so all know it very well these are the scientific terms so you can ask the scientific terms to your science teacher so without wasting the time let me start the first stanza of the poem let's see in the first stanza the poet said turn turn thy hasty foot aside nor crush that helpless worm the frame thy scornful looks deride required a god to form this is a beautiful poem which has a beautiful rhythm in the first stanza of the poem we have a rhyme scheme that is a b a b likewise in the second we have c d c d in the same way the poet maintaining the rhyme scheme the tone of the poem is very serious or you can say this is thought provoking it means sochne par ye poem majboor kar deti hai so that is the main quality of this poem right so what is the first line turn turn thy hasty foot aside so thy means your this is the archaic use of the language this word belongs to old english and the meaning of it is your so turn turn you hasty foot aside hasty means hurried or quick manner it means the poet is going somewhere in quick manner and here the first line indicates that turn turn thy hasty foot aside right so this poet is now going somewhere in hurried manner and he got the instruction instantly that turn turn thy hasty foot aside so that he does not crush the helpless worm nor crush that helpless worm the frame thy scornful looks deride scornful means expressing hatred or contempt jis cheez ko dekh ke aapke mind mein ghruna utpanna ho jati hai so that particular thing is called as scornful so of course whenever you had seen the worms how do you feel you feel disgusted you feel scornful you feel derided right so here the poet is also had seen this worm that is very small or tiny and of course if the poet doesn't aside his foot so definitely he will crush the helpless worm he will take the life of the worm and that is not actually the good thing so the frame thy scornful looks deride it means the appearance of the worm is little bit different and not so many people like the worms right and basically we are afraid of the worms so we need to know this particular thing that all the creatures those who got the life who gave them this life so of course the answer is god god gives us this beautiful gift of the life and of course god created us with the same patience with the same spirit with the same passion and so we need to think about each and every creature which is existed on this earth so this is all about the first stanza so the poet is now going somewhere and of course he got the instruction that turn turn thy foot aside 
so he does not crush the helpless worm. The return may be filled with scorn and hatred for the worm, right? Because worms are basically they are living in the sand or they are living in the land, right? They are living in the soil, and due to that, they looks very different. But you need to know that they were created by the God. So this is all about the first stanza of the poem. In the second stanza, the poet said that the common lord of all that move, from whom thy being flowed, a portion of his boundless love, on that poor worm bestowed. So here, in the first line, the poet said the common lord. It means if we believe that the God is one, right? Forget about the forms of the God because we have so many gods in India. So if we if we believe in just one common Lord, which moves us or which moves all the earth, right? From whom thy being float, it means from this God we got the power to move. We got the power to think. We got the power to become kind, right? And this is the portion of his boundless love. Thy being here, thy means that is the word, archaic word, right? Thy means your, your existence, your life. And your life is the gift of the common Lord, God. And he is not discriminate in between any one of the creature on the earth. He loves each and every creature in the same manner, in the same way. And here, a portion of his boundless love. Boundless means unlimited. He loves each and every creature. And of course, this is the boundless love. There is no any kind of the limitation. That is unlimited love that God showers on us. And on that poor worm also, he bestowed this boundless love. It means, is chhoti se worms ko bhi wo utna hi pyar karta hai, jitna ki o ek insan ko ya fir ek animal ko karta hai. And we need to respect that. So, here it's very clear that each and everything which moves, behind that power we have the God. And of course, this is very important that each and everything on this earth which was created by the God. And for God, each and everything is important. So, agar wo worm ho ya koi aur cheez, wo us cheez ko utna hi pyar karta hai jitna usse karna chahiye. And so, here we had completed the second stanza. But what about the third one? In the third stanza, the poet gives us an important message that the sun, the moon, the stars he made. So all these things were made by the God. Just assume that. And the sun, the moon, the stars he made to all his creatures free and spreads over earth the grassy blade for worms as well as thee. It means the sun, the moon, the stars. Whatever we have on this earth, which is the creation of the God. And of course, this is very much important that the sun, the moon, the stars, all he made that in the same spirit, with the same kind of the passion. And he loves each and everything. And so, the same God who made human beings and all other things that move, has also given a portion of his unlimited love to the poor worm and of course to each and every human being. God has given, given the sun, the moon and the stars free to all the creatures. There is no any kind of the discrimination. Yani, jitna suraj aapka hai, utna hai mera hai. Ya jitna suraj aapka hai, utna hai animal ka hai, har ek creature ka hai. Right? And everybody is enjoying their freedom. Because freedom is one of the essential thing we should have. Because without it, it's not possible to live our life in good way. Freedom hari ke life mein hona hi chahiye. Kyunki agar wo nahi raha, so definitely it's not possible for us to live our life in good way. So, this is the unlimited love which God powers on us. 
right so of course worms are also the part of this nature and they have the same kind of the freedom yani aapke jaisa hi uska hi uska bhi freedom hai ya uski bhi life hai and we need to respect that life so here jaise ghas aapko aage dikhai de rahi hai jitni wo ek worm ki hai utni hi aapki hai ya utni hi wo ek animal ki hai so here we should believe in equality we should believe in kindness so that is the important message which thomas gisborne would like to share with you so here in the last stanza the poet said to us let them enjoy their little day let them enjoy their little day their lowly bliss received oh do not lightly take away the life thou canst not give it means here we have the important message in the last stanza that the poet urges us to remember that every creature on this earth is created by god we must hence respect every creature big or small and not take away a life which we cannot give agar hum kisi ki zindagi badha nahi sakte to use kam bhi karne ka adhikar hame nahi hai so that is the important message which thomas gisborn gives us so here he said to us let them enjoy their little day so lowly bliss means simple pleasures small life is there maybe two days life is there maybe three days life is there but for them this is the whole life unke liye wo puri zindagi hai jaise jaise aap apni zindagi se pyar karte ho to usi tarah se har ek creature apni zindagi se pyar karta hai राइट सो डोंट टेक देयर लाइफ अवे यानी उन्हें मारने का अधिकार आपको किसी ने नहीं दिया है पर स्टिल मेनी पीपल दे आर डूइंग दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दे आर टेकिंग अवे दे आर स्मॉल लाइफ राइट दे आर नॉट थिंकिंग अबाउट द एनिमल्स दे आर नॉट थिंकिंग अबाउट द क्रिएचर्स राइट दे आर दे आर एक्चुअली बिहेव्स लाइक द एनिमल्स राइट सो वी डोंट हैव द राइट टू टेक अवे एनी वन ऑफ द क्रिएचर्स लाइफ रिमेंबर दैट हियर Kanst means this is a archaic word. Archaic means which is belongs to Old English, and the meaning of it can. Down means here you, right? So don't take away the life of anyone. So let's or let them enjoy, right? Let them enjoy the little day. The worms has the same kind of the freedom, and you should give them the same kind of freedom like you. so let them enjoy the lowly bliss received they got the lowly bliss they got this life from the god so do not lightly take away the life thou canst give away like you are enjoying your life with full spirit with your friends with your family members with your relatives in the same way worms have the same kind of the freedom to enjoy their life and of course if you are giving them same kind of the freedom if you are respecting each and every creature if you are not taking their life definitely they will be happy so with this great message i would like to tell you that always respect every small or tiny creatures which available on this earth so here i would like to stop thank you everyone Stay home stay safe stay tuned